Good morning and welcome again to Summit. It's our MIPIC edition of the program. And once again, I say compliments of the season and also wishing you a happy new year in advance. We're already edging towards the end of the year. And um, well, we look forward to a more prosperous 2022. My name is Chumoke Michaels. You're welcome to the program. Banji. Yeah, we're good still in morning. the good morning, Jumoke. We're still in the festive mood. Mm. The festivities are all over the place. I don't know how much rice you have taken so far, chicken <laughs> and all that. I'm sure your I'm sure your friends must have extended the <laughs> this year is one kind though, of, but uh, we still thank God it's all the same. <laughs> well, my name is Banji Busari, and this is the midweek edition of our program Summit. Uh, I can assure you that today's edition is Okoju Bumper Edition of Summit. You are welcome. All right, so today, like Banji has said, is a bumper edition of the program because we're going to be looking at so many national issues today, and we have an able representative who's going to be taking us through all this because he's a lawmaker. You know, he's at the end of our affairs. So we'll be able to get apt information on everything happening in Nigeria. Well, some of the few things we'll be able to touch on the program today. We are being joined by uh, a member House of Representatives representing Lagos mainland federal constituency, the person of Honorable G.D. Jimo. He's also the Chairman House Committee on Urban Development and Regional Planning. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Good to Good have morning. you join us. Thank you. God bless you. Well, I don't know. There's what is called ranking member. I'm sure, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're a ranking member of the House of Reps now. With cognitive experience. With cognitive experience. <laughs> and that's why we always rely on you uh, for information from the National Assembly. Thank you. It's our pleasure to have you here. Pleasure of meeting you too. Yeah. Compliments. Uh, compliments. Same yes, here. Same. Um, uh, so much yes. to actually discuss. Well, we'll we go to his constituency yes. first. Uh, yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll start with this because it's a charity mm. begins at Our home. home yeah. uh, Jumake, you, you, you know that there's something very, very big happened in that constituency. That's Lagos mainland mm. constituency uh, last week, where all the who is who gathered to actually commission uh, a sports center, that's a youth sports center at Okobaba in Lagos mainland local government. That facility, that sports center was actually facilitated by no other person than our guest today, that's Honorable Jide Jimon, representing that federal constituency, Lagos mainland federal constituency. Um, the package would actually speak for itself. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah, we should yeah. go for that package yeah. where it speaks for itself about what actually happened on that day. And it was a turning point as far as sports development in the grassroots is concerned in that local government. So let's go for the commissioning of uh, OCO, that's a youth sports center, OCO by Lagos Midland Federal Council, I mean constituency. Sports development received a big boost recently with the inauguration of the youth sports center Okubaba in Lagos mainland. The sports center was facilitated by the House of Reps member representing Lagos mainland federal constituency, Honorable Abdurrahim Olajide Jima. He has served the state and the House of Assembly. He has served the people as the chairman of Yaba CDA and presently a second time at the House of Representatives and no other person than Alaji Honorable Abraham Olajide Jimo. So ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. You are welcome to this community. This is this is this area is known as Oko Baba Stadium. The sports facility was in fulfillment of sustainable development goals, SDGs of the federal government. At the event was the senior special assistant to the president on sustainable development goals, Princess Adejoke Oriloku Adefuluri, who commended the initiative while urging the youth to ensure good maintenance of the facility. So they must emphasize themselves so that they can keep things and live long. So this project is very, very important for the future leader. So therefore I congratulate the people of mainland local government 
for this project. We must take ownership and encourage more people to play at this uh, uh, field. As they play there, they will not get wounded and they will not get injured. So, go and with us in Jesus' name. For so the glory of God, for the glory Speaking at the event, the Commissioner of Sports, Lagos State, Mr. Shegun Daudu, stated that such infrastructure will further complement the ones provided by the state government. The event was also graced by several dignitaries who delivered goodwill messages one after the other. My is just to appreciate Honorable Jiden Jimo, who has facilitated uh, this project and also to appreciate our senior special assistant who is uh, the head of uh, SDG whose uh, baby is this project uh, on behalf of the people of Okubaba and I guess that's what I represent here on behalf of the people of Okubaba the people of Lagos mainland local government uh, and the people of the entire Lagos mainland for our we want to appreciate the two of you, and I also want to appreciate Mr. President, uh, who has made this project uh, uh, possible. I want to send a note, um, and uh, I will advise that a management team must be put in place to actually uh, take care of this speech. Because when I got here, when I got here. I never believed that this is Okobaba, the pitch uh, which we uh, used to play so many years back. And I think now this place, this field now can also be enlisted by NFF as uh, one of the pitches to be used for the league. Thank you, our local government. This is wonderful. And to the youth, it's a sign that you will not be forgotten. It's a sign that whatever we do, we are very important to us. I don't want to waste our time. I want to say big thank you to everybody. And I hope that very soon, others will come into Lagos Mainland. I want to be frank with you that we appreciated what JJ has done to this place. This area was a, just a dumping area. Before. But now, you can see, look at it. And I hope the generation coming behind will make a better use of this pitch. So therefore, on the behalf of Lagos Mainland, I thank every one of you for coming. And I was excited when JJ started this. I know JJ to be a very, very responsible, intelligent, transform transformative, resourceful, dynamic personality. You will see that um, those who are identifying with this project, all eminent personalities here seated. They are even sometimes more than what will have graced the even a state commissioning. His acceptance of what you have done and your contribution to your um, um, local government. I congratulate you. I must also congratulate our own, um, the former deputy governor of Lagos State, for this synergy between your constituency office and uh, excellency. This is what we pray for, and this is what we hope that we see more and more and more. And In his speech at the event, the chief host, Honorable Abdurrahim Olajide Jima, said that the sports center was in fulfillment of his dreams for sport development at the grassroots. He said that the center possessed all the facilities befitting of a sports complex. He also acknowledged the efforts of his predecessor, Alaji Bashir Bolaniwa, for laying a good foundation for sports in Lagos mainland. I thought today as Gide Jima plays football. What did I say? Gide Jima plays football. Today marks another giant strike in the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, the office of Senior Special Assistant to the President of SDG, 
Our Excellency Honorable Princess Adejoke Rulukwe Adefudure, and Lagos Mainland Federal Constituency, being represented by Honorable Jide Jima. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press, the original structure was built by Honorable Bashir Omola Jabolaniwa in the years back when he was the council chairman. The such structure was demolished and replaced with this newly constructed, restructured, and remodeled youth centre, facilitated by your representative, Honorable G.D. Jima, Lagos Mainland Federal Constituency. To be honest, this is fantastic and built to the standard. To our team youth, this is for you, and it must be guided jealously with consciousness. This center is a place where the youth can have intellectual, physical, and mental development for every recreational and human capacity. The center has ash football pitch, pavilion, toilet facilities, lights, and well-secured environment with police station very close by, in which that police station will also soon be commissioned. We all know that sports is an unseen investment. Desmond Benjamin said, and I quote, the youth of a nation are trustees of posterity. I, therefore, happy to our youth, community development association, private individuals, corporate organizations, and government to take the ownership. Today, in my capacity as your reps, I publicly present this giant call for the competition to be played today to mark this event. I want to appreciate H.E. Honorable Prince Adejoke Urelope Adevulure. Honestly, you are a wonderful person, thoughtful and responsible mother and responsible wife. And I think it is very important. Anytime I call you, you always pick your call to tell me what next. The highlight of the day's event was the official tapping of the ball by Honorable Jide Jima and Princess Adijoke Adifudure, followed by a football match. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your The winner was later presented with a cup by the dignitaries at the event. It was a good package. <laughs> All right, so that's the package from uh, the Lagos mainland, uh, where uh, Honorable Jide Jimo is uh, the federal representative. Oh, so that was um, a very good one. It's like you were a footballer. Uh, in the past, of course, or you yes. still are a footballer, of course. I've seen, I've seen. <laughs> yeah, that move you made there was uh, <laughs> very skillful. I may yes. not be a professional footballer, but I am a footballer. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let, let, let me ask I know there are a lot of uh, things you have in mind for your people in Lagos, mainland, but you chose this, I mean, for them in this period. What actually motivated this uh, sports? Uh, your investment in sports in that the best way to encourage the youth of this time is through this 
spot development. You know, I actually quoted Mr. Benjamin that said that the youth of the nation are the trustees of posterity. If we encourage them and you take them as the trustee of posterity, things will go on fire. There will be no beyond this kind of uh, crime and criminality. They will, they will be moving away completely from any vices. I know you've, you, 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 you've actually stood against courtesy exactly, and uh, exactly. all sorts of uh, vices exactly. in Lagos. And, and no, is this no, one no, of the ways no, to no, actually... No, no sport and football in particular is one of those things that brings people together. No matter the tribe, no matter the religion, no matter where you have come from, that has been one thing that is symbolic that can bring people together. And it's very important for us to bring all our youth together in the gospel like federal constituency. That's what we have done. And sport itself is an unseen development investment. Mm -hmm. Building it, by the time that thing comes up, it will be appreciated. All right, so in this year, 2021, what other uh, projects, people-based projects, were uh, done in that constituency? Oh, that has been a very big one. You know, there are some unseen uh, assets. Some are wasted assets. Some are useful assets. I believe in spending and investing on useful assets. Take for example, there's no single word. We have 18 words in the federal constituency. There's no single word that I have not provided them all, whether two or three. And they are there for people to see. That is another investment that is meaningful to the life of people. When you have access to, to portable water, you have it must be friendship. I mean, it must be friendly. Whoever that can do that for people, that person is friendly to his people, and I tell you that a lot. Nobody will do away with water. Like fellow, we say, he said, water. You know, get ahead of me. So that is one thing that is sure for our life. So we have provided numerous number of that. Apart from giving people some empowerment token or some tools for them to work. And we, have how, so, okay. we have so many number of things from two women, widow, elderly people, youth, father with the refrigerator, giving them some empowerment for like a uh, refrigerator, uh, grinding machine, tailoring machine, dryer, and so on and so forth. I think we have been doing all those things and we continue to do it until the end of our tenure. All right. Um, I, I, I know that uh, in the House, in the Federal House of Representatives, just as Jumoke said, you are the Chairman, House Committee on Urban Development, development yeah. and Regional Planning. Um, and you've been Chairman for a number of years now, three years yes, now. Yes, yes. Can you tell us specifically what reforms you have brought to that industry, to that sector of uh, that's regional, regional planning? planning. What you know, new you know, reforms you know, as urban, a committee brought you know, Urban development is about life of our people. If you plan your environment very well, there's no way you can have destruction. If you plan your environment very well, there's no way you can have fire disaster. If you plan your environment very well and you develop it, people's lives will be more meaningful. There will be gainful employment and you'll be able to achieve one or two things. Take for instance, this is an environment of MITV. If you have not placed all these things here where they are supposed to be, it cannot work for you. It's because you plan it well, you develop it well. That's why my TV is growing. And we, we pray that it should continue to grow from strength to strength. Amen. That is one thing. Anything development is about life of your people. We must ensure we have synergy with state government, local government, and federal, so that things will work on fire. And that has been our plan. And we have been doing that very well. Just of reason, we have, we have what we call Urban Development Commission B. That B as part of Development Commission, Commission B. B. That B has carried it through the first third reading. It is now for us now to take it down to I mean the first second reading. It we come back to third reading. We are the committee will have sat on it and discuss it before it passed and become a law or by way of act when after the president has decided, uh, signed it. That, that's one of the plans we are putting in place and we shall continue to do that. Of recent, Lagos State Government and Federal Government, we have the synergy. There we have these stakeholders meeting on urban development generally 
and that is what we did, and we continue to do it from various states to the state. Uh, uh, let, let, let me, let me uh, because you mentioned Lagos State, um, what was your reaction to the, to the, to the collapse of the 21-story building in the jurisdiction? I would Did your to. committee have anything to do to, to avert such a, such a I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to react. I would rather respond. Okay. Simply because, at so the time the approval was given, we heard that there was some kind of misunderstanding. We are committee has been set up to look at the issues. I wouldn't want to discuss that issue until the finding of that committee comes out before we can know what to do. As a lawmaker, you have to tarry a while and listen to what the public will say. The report of committee will discuss and the public will know. I don't want to prejudice whatever thing that will happen from that committee. You might please allow me to, to ask this. Uh, you spoke about the Urban Development Commission Bill, which is just passed the second reading now. now on your own, since your assumption of this office as 2015, since you became House of Rep member, you have sponsored over 10 bills. And no, no, not even, of course, over 10, yes. Over 10, about yes. 13. Yes, no, no, it's, it's even more than 13. More than 13. Private yeah. members' bills. How many of them have actually come to fruition? I mean, it's in terms of passing the bills, as the, how many of them have actually signed. been signed into law? No, 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 no. It's, it's, not, it's not, that's what we call concurrent. Uh, approval. You know, we are running by camera system of, 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 of government, particularly the legislature. When you have a B in place in as of reps, when after the first, second, and third reading has been passed, you have to send it to the Senate for concurrent acceptance. Most of those Bs, about five of my own private members be, being sponsored by me, are now with Senate. When that concurrent is done, they will now send it down to the president for assent. So until that is done, because it will become an act. So for now, that's the stage we are. Is it likely to see the light of the day before By the end way, of the night assembly? Of course, yes, of course. So many number of it will come out as an act of the federal government. All right, I think we should go to the issue of um, insecurity. Yes. Because uh, that's uh, so. We should go to burning. the issue of security. Oh, security. Okay. From there, okay. you cannot discuss whether okay. we are secure or oh, we are not. Okay, let's go to the issue of security. I don't security. want us to have any negativity. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know that uh, you also, he also. Yes, you made the. Uh, you gave an advice sometime yeah. this year in March that federal government should recruit more troops. Exactly. To be able to combat uh, exactly. this uh, banditry, exactly. insurgency, and kidnapping. Exactly. And all that. Now the year is running to an end with a couple of days now. But are you really satisfied with all the uh, efforts of the federal government in curbing insecurity in this land? Are you really satisfied? Was your advice taken to start with? You see, the, there's a cliche, and I want to quote it, that a peaceful environment is synchronous to economic development. When you have an environment that is very peaceful, economy will grow. So many number of things will go and follow it. Life of people will, will be okay. And in the situation we are we have now in Nigeria, I cannot say I'm absolutely satisfied. I'm not saying that. But at least for now, for the fact that effort has been put in place, so many number of strategies have been added to it. People call that the call the government that they should change the service team. They did. We brought in news one. That does not eradicate what has been happening. It has been substantially modified the system of operation. And with what we have now, I can say that with the introduction of Tucano and some other equipment that have been combined and fight this crime, I think things are getting better. I cannot say that it is perfect, but it will come to fruition at the end of the day that security of this country will be okay and we shall all enjoy. But we have uh, information on some of these, uh, lo some local governments in some states where these uh, insurgents or is it terrorists have already uh, taking over, like they're controlling, the people have to pay them levies, 
and all Ads. that. Yeah, and tax and all those things. What is the is the house really worried about this happenings? Uh, Niger State, Zamfara, Borno State. You know, we have some selected communities where we are. We hear that insurgents have um, taken over. And as a human being, one must be worried. He must be concerned, particularly when the lives of people are not safe or secured. And as a human being, you must ensure you are part of the progress that we savage whatever problem we have. In doing this, bandits, insurgents, kidnappers, harm robbery, harm robbers, and so on and so forth, all these are crime and criminalities. And I think and I be, believe that that is too barbaric. It's a human for you to sit down somewhere and aim at somebody else's life and take it. Whether that person is a Christian or Muslim or pagan, we share the same life, the same blood. Our color might be different. But what you have is what I have. What they have is what I have. Therefore, we must discourage whoever that is doing all those kind of things. Therefore, all of us must condemn it in totality and ensure we fight it frontally as to address it so that the life of our people will be meaningful and taken care of. That is what's important. For now, I want to encourage our government you know, I, I, never say, I never say government, I say our government, because I'm part and parcel of the government, and I form the secret heart of the government. I want to encourage us that we should do more so that the life of people will be more safe. Now, even you, uh, I'm sure the reason why you should even be worried is that there was speculation at uh, security reports yeah. from the think, DSS a couple of uh, days ago yeah. that uh, the lives of uh, uh, politicians, politicians, that's uh, the high-profile uh, members of the National Assembly and that they are, your lives are at risk, partic particularly during, during this youth time, time period. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got that report, was it discussed at the floor of the National Assembly? Was it, was it, was it, was, it, was, it was after the, the reception, when the reception had been announced. announced. I mean, when the reception recess. had been announced. Uh, recess, I mean, rather, I'm sorry. When the recess had been announced, that thing came up. Okay. And we actually discussed it. It is not the life of politicians that is in danger. It's the life of everybody. But every life is sacred. And we must take it like that. The life, that's why I said that whether you are black or you are green, you are white, you are this, we share the same life. We are one. We are equal before Almighty God. Because we are created with one life. Nobody has two lives. Nobody has two hearts. I don't have that. You don't have that. If she doesn't have that. We have to take it as sacred, and that is the most important thing. Whether the DSS has made this pronouncement, or security operative or agencies have made this pronouncement or not, about individual or about uh, a politician, we must take it seriously. It's, it shouldn't be about a politician alone. It's about every one of us. Our security must be tightened up tenaciously to ensure that we have this perfect livelihood. That is what is important. That is what is important. Uh, some Nigerians, particularly people in the civil society groups, have uh, repeatedly said government has the capacity to put an end to insurgency if it actually, if it's actually committed enough. That government has not shown enough commitment to wiping out, to stopping insurgency. Do you share? As it, is, it is always easy for you to be outside and criticize. It's just like football feed. In those days, when you go. To the field and you watch people play. Now, ah, you should have controlled it this way. Yeah, you should have chased it. Ah, no, it's good for you to criticize. But when you get there, you know that field you are watching at far is a very wide place. So when you get to the government, you know it is not easy. The people there, they don't have an intention of bastardizing the old system. The intention they had is to come and serve. That has been the intention. Nobody, nobody will want to go to a government parastata to destroy it. You want to put in your own effort and ensure that you get something make positive done and make it better. For the people that are in government, do you think that they don't know what they are doing? As at the time they were campaigning, they planned, 
this is what we do when we get there. After all, when they get there, they discover that that thing, the tactics you think you can play outside, it's not what you see inside. Don't forget that when you are in the system, some within you, within that system, you'll be praying for demolition of that system. You'll be praying for destruction of that system. Why some will be praying that this thing must not spoil? Let's move it on. So by the time you now take this step, we should thank God that God knows the best. Why he brought in worry? He knows the best. At that point, sir. At that point, he knows the best. He knows the best. Because nobody, nobody can say what will have happened if Buari has not come. Okay. That is it. Okay, but he you, knows the you, best. Well, I don't and, know. and I start to be co confronted and challenged by anybody. I don't need you, don't, you, don't, you don't know anything except God. God knows why he has decided that this is the way it's going to be. I don't know if you were present at the book launch of uh, Chief Bisi Akode during his uh, recent I was not there. Was not. Okay, Chief Bisi Akode actually told the president to his face that he would not sympathize with him. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the myriad of problems, challenges confronting the country because Buhari himself campaigned, actually begged to be elected as a president yes. that because he probably knew he was capable yes. to solve our, all our problems. So. Uh, who else should we talk to if our president is not? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that we should not criticize. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Buhari is a perfect human being. I was in this is your program when I said that don't take Buhari to be a Niger. I said Buhari is not a Niger. He's not a prophet. He's a man like us. It doesn't mean that if he gets there, he will do everything. I said it here. Go and. Go to your record, your archive, and check it there. That has been the kind of person I am. I am a realist. I will always be truthful in anything I'm saying. What I'm saying is that Buhari being a person that has been elected by people through God Almighty, God knows why he has brought it. He knows why he has brought it. Those that have served before him, God knows why he has brought them. I think you are getting me. The next person who knows who he is going to be. Nobody knows. But I'm now saying that as body is today, God knows why he has brought him. We should all combine effort together, be prayerful, so that things will change for better. Amen. Because in the next two years, another person will come. Who will be that person? Nobody knows. So Chipisa Akade might have said anything. Chipisa Akade is also part and parcel of this government. They formed the government together. They campaigned together. If he has not been doing what he should have done, they should not keep quiet. They should continue to say that we have not done what we should have done. Let's do it now because it is not too late. All right, sorry, please. Still on this issue of um, security, yeah. um, you know that um, people now are more exposed to technology. Yes. We watch movies, you know, especially action movies, where you see uh, the deployment of technology, uh, drones, satellites, and things like that to fight um, crime. Okay, so why are we not going in that direction? Why are the lawmakers not pushing more for the deployment of technology in this fight against... You see, you see, technology, technicalities, any language, any objective you can put in place to solve your problem, they are all welcome things. The rate of crime is now going technical, and we need technology to fight it. Hence, that was what brought the introduction of Tukano. Before today, we have never heard of Tukano in Nigeria. For the fact that the federal government can bring 12 Tukano. Uh, army and uh, so our, our armed forces to, over, to the U.S. to go and trade. It's part of technology. But are they being used already? Of course, they have started that. Because you cannot use Tukano for those an ordinary criminal. Oh, that, was, that was what the United Nations said and the United States of America. Uh, before you can apply this to Kano in anybody or any group at all, law must take its course and may pronounce that these people, these guys, are now terrorists. So in using to Kano, you can only use to Kano jet to fight terrorist. terrorists. And you cannot use to Kano jet to fight arm robber or kidnapper. If you do that, that means you are doing something against humanity so the by law. Of so the pronouncement of the court uh, yes, has made it valid. valid now that you can now apply to Kano to fight them. But that you can now see the level of this fighting. Process. And it's now coming down gradually. 
those people they have now decided to move into villages and villages and go and kill innocent people that they don't have anything to offer. Poor people. Poor people in a village that they don't even have light. You just go there and go and kill them. On what basis? That's heinous. It's crime against humanity. It's barbaric. It's heartless. We should condemn that. And by the time all this kind of thing now comes up again, people will fight back. And that's what we are now seeing now. Uh, uh, okay, Le uh, moving ahead, Jumaki. Yeah. I think there's people out. Yeah. I'm sure our viewers out there will be looking forward to certain issues that this is an opportunity to. <laughs> Let's visit uh, the issue of electoral. <laughs> I know, I know you ask her that. that. We have to come Let's to that. visit the issue of the electoral bill. Yeah. Uh, you, the House is already re recessed now as a matter of the National Assembly. Um, we had various reactions from the House of Bread, for instance, after the president failed or refused to grant assent to the electoral bill. Some of your members actually almost brought down the roof of the National Assembly <coughs> that the president must, otherwise he will be over, overruled or uh, be an overriding yeah, right, uh, yes. uh, uh, bill. Yeah. Now, as at the time you were dispersing, what was the general mood? We know what the speaker said, that that issue will be revisited upon your arrival as after the recess. But what was the general mood? Are people really, uh, is it that you have suspended because we know the Senate, Senate has suspended based on what uh, Ahmed Lawan, the Senate president said, that he will always be on the same page with the president on issues. What, are you also on the same page on this issue that you don't want to disgrace or embarrass. embarrass the president. Well, well the essence of, of democracy is that is is about constitutionalism, and nobody has an absolute power on anything in democracy. And in democracy, it call it government of the people by the people for the people. If that's the case, that means legislature has no absolute power, executive has no absolute power. And the judiciary, the others also have no absolute power. It is they are intertwined, interconnected, and that is the basis of democracy. We democracy has come to play in this regard. The bill is on the table. We have done what we have to do by law. That bill has been sent to the president for assent. The president in the constitution has also power, he has the power to veto it. And he has done that by way of declining that he's not going to sign based on this, 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 this reason. He cited so many number of reasons, about five or six. And that has been returned back to us. We also have the power under the same constitution to override. So we have not gotten to that now. When we resume, we know what next is going to be. When after that is done, that does not mean that that's the head. Anybody, anybody, either executive or individual, can challenge our overriding power in court of law. The court of law cannot sit down, look into it, and make pronouncement. Whatever is the pronouncement from the court, that will now be the final and final well, that, externality. That will be a long process, especially I'm coming, the fact I'm coming, that... I'm coming to that. Okay. I'm coming to another thing. That will be final, and final is finality. That's the thing notwithstanding. In the B, you are talking about the Act B that we are talking about. It was 2010, a draft act that we are trying to amend. It's not that it's, it is not something in the system before. And that 2010 act that we are trying to amend to become a B that the president will now sign and become another act, we have over 155 clauses. Out of 155 clauses, only one has now been the subject of controversy for discussion, which is section 87 of that B that's talked about direct primaries. And the government, the president is now saying that if we take direct primary, then the right of other political parties and individuals will be jeopardized. The security and money that's going to be expended on it, we did that. Well, those are people, I mean, those are points from him. But that does not mean that all that that we have done has become a nullity. No. You can only discuss on that one alone. 
that section 87, or the direct or indirect. Yeah. Let me now come to you. The president himself enjoyed the two. Yeah. He has he first participated time. first time under indirect, indirect, second time under direct. I have participated in all in my life, both consensus, direct and indirect. I have been involved. There's no one that is perfect. Because one beings we are dangerous. No one among those things we have discussed that is perfect. Like politicians use the one that's. I'm now saying, yes, I'm not. What, what, what I'm now saying now is this. Whichever one that comes at the end of the day, what is important is fear and free, credible elections. elections. That is the bottom line. All right, but what about the issue of electronic transmission in that? No, that has been already. People have the people already. Have have the feeling, already no, but that no controversy on that. Okay, why was it not signed by the president? Okay, no, I this, accept the others, but just mm, 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 no, so no, no, that no. the thing can still. It's not it, the way you uh, people are reading. So it, yes. No, you know where the baby are. What you people are reading are quite different from what is there. Okay, the, this, the, what we are talking about is anominables B. Okay, help us that have was one round fifty five clauses, mm -hmm. no other clause except, no, that. except that one. Yes. So when that one comes within the tickle on high, is it that we reject it or we we, we take right, it? So we'll because the only one that is subject for discussion is yeah, that exactly. section yes. eight which is direct primaries. Mm -hmm. Every other one, no no controversies, no controversies at all. All right, so, so we don't have problem. Sit, will the ref sit down now and work on that clause? It's, not, it's, this, it's, it's, it's not even this the, monotonous me, no, no, process. No, no, no. It's, not even, it's not even the refs, the National Assembly, the, the legislature, assembly, yes, sorry. The, the two bodies, yes. Senate and refs, because we will work together. I don't want to speculate what will happen. Let's resume back and see what will happen. I know is that within the circle of an eye, within why we get this right, but there's something the speaker said just before you went on recess yeah. that the lawmakers will all go back to their constituents yes. and discuss with the people yes. and get feedback yes have you started doing that so many number of people have discussed we have divergent opinions some people even are concerned we tell you what's the purpose of direct and direct but which one is perfect go for anyone today what you want is credible election that was some some people will tell you that i for one if they ask me, what do you want? I will tell anybody, I want direct primaries. Because direct primary is all inclusive. It will allow people in that community to participate. Direct primary will give room for credible voter, I mean, party register members. If you are not a member, you can't come there to vote. You must be a car carry member, you must be a financial member. I think you are getting me. You must be a member that is always attend meeting. In going to your world, you have to participate and partake in that election. That's the process. That one will be better than collegiate. Collegiate is anybody that is in the system, statutory, and had to something, they go there and go and vote. A lot of people can even be bought through the collegiate uh, 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 system. Out there in the public, yeah. there is a wide speculation that there is a battle for the soul of the party between the governors and the National Assembly, that uh, the governors, for instance, are opposed to direct primaries because that would actually take away the control of the party from them. And not that the National not. Assembly is actually willing to take the soul of the party. Uh, Tell us, uh, no, 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 not all governors are opposed to. This thing depends on the individual. I'm now telling you here, and I'm telling the public, there's no one that is introduced that I'm not, a, that I'm not okay with. Because I am, a, I, am a, I am a grassroots person. No, not benefited. I am a grassroots person. When it comes to go to your grassroots and go and allow people to vote for you, I have participated in these so many elections through that, that, that system. So if we are now talking about direct, which is collegiate, statutory delegate and added another one to it, it is like you are going through two processes. But direct is one process. Go to your ward, elect, co co compile the result, and announce. But in case of indirect, you will first of all go to your ward, pick delegates, add that number of delegates to the statutory delegate. You now convert them in one place and vote. People can buy them. They can give their money and take them away from you. Mm. 
that name you have excluded so many number of people who has the opportunity of voting for certain person in their various world from participating. But do you agree that this direct, like you said, will uh, need more, take more financial? Uh, That's greater financial. Yeah, greater education. financial. Education. There's no one that will not take financial education either through public or individual. If you go through indirect, individual will spend much more money. But if you go through direct, it is the party that will spend more money. So what's the, what's the big deal? It's all, all I say. All right, so let's take some messages <laughs> so that I can respond to them. Uh, someone said, do you house of... The Rep person has a name? Yes, Michael. From do you... No, didn't mention. Do you house of rep, rep members sometimes tell the president the truth? Truth like his pla plan to hike petroleum products and um, do you think Nigeria is moving in the right direction? Well, well uh, let me just say that I, I don't believe in speculation because he, the president has never informed the House officially that it's increasing the price of uh, prices of petroleum products. He has never told us that, so I don't want to believe in speculation. And I know one thing for sure: in the 2021, uh, 2022. 22. Budget, budget that we have passed, something of that nature is not there. But so, you know, the NLC has already planned a. Hmm? That's what I'm, I, don't, I say. I don't want to. I don't want. You see, I have been part and parcel of NLC in those days. NLC, you should, you should, as, as a person, workers should always prepare for anything that is coming up. The the language of worker is, you have to be prepared at any time. Okay. So as right. a government person, I do. I must not believe in speculative things simply because i am an insider in the budget of 2022 that we have just passed there's nothing of that in there so why should i discuss it now sorry but, but i for one I'm, I'm, i will completely against that because of the economic situation we have I find ourselves that no there must be nothing of such coming what up about now. the five thousand naira that is supposed to be paid to that's what i'm 40 saying million that was, that, you see that, that, that is, means there's that's, that's really subsidy. talk. Yeah, there's really talk about increase of wealth price. Mm -hmm. You see, let, let me, okay, see, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm aware I'm, that what's the uh, the, the, the issue is uh, you know the National Assembly said it was not aware of this uh, pro, uh, budgetary provision of five five thousand to forty million Nigerians. Yes. That is not captured in twenty twenty two budget. Budgets, so yeah. what's the last? What's the position as we speak? Uh, that, 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 you, <laughs> as far as the law is concerned. Mm -hmm. The president is going to sign that budget, the one we have passed on the 31st, which is Friday, 10 a.m. When it's signed, it, that means it has become an act of the National Assembly. Okay. And in that B, the one we have passed, there's nothing like the issue of prices of uh, petroleum products or increments. subsidy or whatever. There's nothing like that. Hmm. All I know is that there could be an incentive through various ministries which has not been explained to the National Assembly. And we are waiting for them to come to, to us and explain to us why that one will come up. Will it be part of supplementary or what will they do? So let us wait until that time comes. But I will oppose it vehemently because. I know that things whether are, are very whether hard. Not, whether or not you are in the, uh, the, the minority, you, you're no, of course, that has been my own system. When the issue of water resources is coming up, I, I oppose it. I told them it's not possible. Okay. It's not no, possible. Okay, no, sorry. Okay. Let me have another one. Yeah. He yeah. said, based on your live TV program, that's this program, yeah. it's very sure that the present Ninth Senate may not do anything on the electoral bill because they are rubber stamp senate that's what people say they say may god save nigeria fred or sunla from a better you know, no everybody is entitled to his opinion <laughs> whether senate is rubber stamp or not all i know is that when that thing comes they should all watch us what will be our reaction or responses okay still along the line of being rubber stamp uh, a very renowned it's from my place now. It's in, you know, it's from Megos Midland. Okay, in his write up, <laughs> it's in the papers this morning. Yeah. And I'll quote him. He said, Since the, the emergence of the National Assembly, that it has become a weeping uh, institution, that, uh, that uh, becoming a rubber stamp and a, rep and a reporting chamber where elected representatives of the people 
uh, beg the directors of MDAs to appear to come for public hearings. Uh, 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 and that uh, many a time you only rubber stamp what the federal, uh, federal government uh, wants. The issue of the NDDC was also raised. That's the 300 billion that today till today nothing has been heard about it. Even this electoral bill, everything may be swept under the carpet. Now, this one, that the Ninth Assembly is much weaker than the Eighth Assembly. That's his personal opinion anyway. When, 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 when we decided to change the budget cycle from December to January, we were not of staff. When we have decided to jack up budget from 15 to 16 trillion, we are not of staff. When we decided to jack it up from 16 to 17, we are not of staff. If we have been a rubber stamp legislature, the way they have brought the budget, that should have been the way we return it today. But we are telling you, when you are talking of appropriation, we have the, the power under the law to do anything with it because we are in charge. Anybody is entitled to his opinion, that is democracy for you. You can criticize me in the way you like. I can also criticize you the way I like. The hours brain are not the same. Our culture are not the same. The culture of Nigeria, you don't interpret it the same way. You will give your own explanation. As even as a senior advocate of Nigeria, the way we explain constitution will be quite different the way half a Babalola we explain it. That's what we now bring them to the court to go and challenge it. And I say, court, please make pronouncement on this issue. When pronouncement is being made by the court, that will now be a final thing. Ade Gorua is our own person, he's our man, and I love him, but he's entitled to his opinion. In democracy, you are free to talk, you are free to speak, you are free to challenge, but you are not free to, to override my own constitutional rights. As a member who has been elected, I have the constitutional power to partake, to participate, and take decisions where necessary that be meaningful to people. No. I know I will not do anything. There are a series of borrowings by the federal government. Why are you not able to stop it? Nigerians believe that you have even allowed, you are, even you United States of America, even United States of America, they borrow. But we are not even no, no, the borrowing. If, if you are borrowing to invest and you are borrowing to spend on infrastructure for development, it will be good. I do not borrow to pay salary. This government has never owed a penny. Pension, I've been properly paid. Salary, I've been properly paid. Have you ever had labor challenging the authority of this government since they have come on board? No. That has been the basic thing. Let's go on with that. If you want to borrow, borrow and invest so that there will be more developmental projects. Are we borrowing to invest? Of course, yes. Every single borrowing we have made is for an investment and it's for infrastructure. Before we go, assure Nigerians that 2022 is going to bring a silver lining that they will be able to put food on their table, there will not be job losses, and that when you go back, you, you continue to walk in that direction. No human being can assure anybody. Let's pray to God and call on him to assist us, to help us, so that Nigeria will change for better. Things will be well for us. That's my plan. And that has been my own belief. Thank you. Yes, we all pray things will be much better for us in the new year. That's what every Nigerian is expecting. That's our expectations from the current administration of President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, our guest today has been a very strong member of the ruling party. That's uh, all progressive Congress. Honorable Jide Jema, serving two terms as the, at the House of Assembly in Lagos State here. Proceeded to Yaba, served two times as the chairman, and today is currently running his second time in the House of Reps. So he knows, he's well informed, well educated, and uh, he's been part of the leadership since uh, 1999. So we are very, very grateful, sir, for your time and your thoughts on the program. Thank you very much. Uh, hoping that uh, by the time you'll be ending your tenure 2023, there will be need for you to continue to serve even at a higher level. Thank you very much. God bless you. Summit and MITV, you are blessed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, and that's our program today. We'll be back next week, Monday, for another edition of the program. That will be the new year anyway. So see you next year. Bye-bye. <laughs>